uh, uh, we share the point, the point of view you just laid out at the AFL-CIO about what people are looking for. They trust, first and foremost, the union. The union. They trust the union. And it really, really matters. And Lonnie, I think the reason why you and I hit it off to begin with and why all the years you guys have supported me is we have the same value set, the same basic fundamental value set. We don't think it's corny to talk about patriotism because we live it. How many of you wearing that blue collar shirt you have on also wore a uniform and fought for this country and volunteered like my son? How many of you have stood up and stood up and taken on corruption when you've seen it? Look what's happening today. You have the president of the United States. It's all about him. It's never about the union leadership. It's about the union membership. It's always about that's why you trust your leadership. It's about the union membership being looked out for. With Trump, it's always about him. It's not about anybody else. This isn't about me, this election. This is about you. This is about the American people. Think about what's going on right now. Here we have a president of the United States who's dealing with Putin in a way that he, in fact, is, uh, we know he's, we've learned overwhelmingly that he is out there not doing a damn thing about the fact that there's overwhelming evidence that Putin has gone and he's paying significant bounties to kill American soldiers in Afghanistan. If my son were still alive after having spent a year in Iraq, I don't know what the hell I would do. How all those parents feel, all you who serve feel. Look what's going on internationally. Look what's going on at home. It's always about him. Oh, we don't want to talk about whether or not there, there are too many tests being taken to determine whether COVID's out there. I want him to slow up the test. The guy who says, I'm commander in chief and then doesn't command anything in this fight against the COVID-19. Folks, this is more than just, it's about decency. It's about honor. It's about restoring dignity. It's the way you guys were raised. If you use, and you women were raised, if you use the language he uses in public, your mother would wash your mouth out with soap. At least where I come from in Scranton and Claymont, the people I grew up with, you guys, you women. I really mean this. It really angers me. Because this is ultimately about values. And that's what gets me into my support. Look, Lonnie, your, your stalwart leadership, everything you've done is to uplift union households. I want to thank you all today for your faith in my effort here and for your encouragement in this fight. I couldn't be prouder to stand with you. And I said, as I said, it's about values, our value system. Like I said, I learned mine taught by my grandfather, grandmother, my mom, dad at the kitchen table, patriotism, opportunity, decency, respect, dignity, everybody getting a fair shot. You never have asked for more than you work for. My dad used to have an expression. He said, Joey, your job's about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about your place in the community. It's about being treated with respect. And it's about being able to look your kid in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be OK. Under this president, that has been decimated. Look what he's done, as I said, with Putin regarding election interference, Afghanistan. Look at the reaction of our military. Do you ever think you'd see those of you who served four four-star generals? walking away, three, two of them will work for him in his administration, fundamentally exposing everything of what he's about and saying they're ashamed, they, I won't put words in their mouth, but saying that they don't want to be associated? You've been with me my whole career. You're the folks I grew up. You're the backbone of the country. You've heard me say it many times. You're the one that keeps this engine running, this economy. Wall Street didn't build America. You build America. Working men and women built America, and unions built the middle class. You're the folks who go out there and repair the broken pipelines that fuel us, to power our communities. You're the ones who risk your lives to bring us back after a major storm. Folks, the storm we're facing today is unlike any we've seen in our lifetimes. More than 130,000 people dead, dead because of the coronavirus. Columbia School uh, medical school is saying that there'd be, if he had acted several months earlier, just one week earlier, there'd be 36,000, I think it was, fewer people dead. He's not changed anything. This, this pandemic is still raging. It's going up. I just got off an hour and a half phone call with the leaders in the medical community telling me what's about to happen. Unemployment is the worst since it's been since the Great Depression. 
In the midst of all of it, we're coming face to face with this long overdue reckoning around the deep wound of racial inequality. Emerging from this moment, we need a stronger, safer, more just, more unified nation. One would be the toughest challenge we've ever faced. We need to repair the lines that have been then severed between the American people. We need to restore power, power to workers, to communities, been denied it so long. Why is it, look at me, why is it that we're in a situation where the studies show that uh, corporate America made several trillion dollars from 14, 2004, I think in 2014, a study done of the University of Massachusetts. What'd they do? They spent all 91% of it on stockholder buyback, on buying back their stock and stockholder dividends. 9% for everything else. What's going on here? We need to build back, not just to where we were, but build back better than we've ever been. Look, I'm sorry to get so, just get really angry about it because I've told Lonnie and I've told every union member that I've been dealing with. As my dad just said, the only way to deal with power is have power. You think corporate America is going to roll over because all of a sudden they realize what's going on is not fair? We need power. And the only power capable to deal with what is the corruption going on in our country today in terms of how people are treated is union power. And the, IB, the IBEW is going to be a critical part of that effort. You know, in the swirl of this crisis, Americans are seeing just how vital unions truly are. They see you stepping into the breach to hold the country together in times of crisis. Electrical workers, healthcare workers, transit workers, folks who teach our kids, maintain our power lines, respond to national disaster, racing into burning buildings, picking up garbage in our streets, racing, racing to make sure that people are protected. America, America has a new name for you, essential workers, as if you haven't been your whole lives. You deserve respect, not only in times of crisis, but every single day. You deserve a safe workplace, fair play. You deserve the protective gear you need to do your jobs. You deserve a government that has your back, has your back. You shouldn't have to fight the Trump administration to set an OSHA standard. You shouldn't have to fight for that basic respect. You should have a president who insists on it from the very outset and fights for it every single day. You know, if you hold, think about this. You know, I saw a study done, I don't know, by one of the main outfits on Wall Street. All Wall Street's worried about, well, with Biden, the progressive Biden gets elected and pro-union Biden isn't going to hurt things. Well, when one of the main operations said, no, it's going to help things. But guess what? He's likely, his proposal is likely to raise salaries, likely to increase uh, work on infrastructure, invest more in the economy. It's likely to grow the economy. You are the reason why the economy's grown in the past. And if we win, labor's going to get the respect and the results it's always deserved. You know, the work ahead is not going to be easy. Republicans have waged war on labor's house. You've heard me say this for the past 15 years. There's a hell of a lot of repair work to be done and a lot more to build up after that. So it's critical that we do the work we can to make it easier for workers to unionize for unions to organize. That's a one day, that's not a one day priority. You know, that's a day one priority because you all are the ones who are gonna rebuild our country. When we come out of this pandemic, and you're gonna be the reasons why we get out of the pandemic because job growth is gonna occur because of the investments in infrastructure and growth and manufacturing and a whole range of other things. We're gonna have a breathtaking opportunity to create good paying union jobs, to deliver the promise of America to Americans who've been denied it for much too long, to rewrite our economy so the prosperity flows not just to CEOs, but to workers who actually build the country. Lonnie knows I believe this every fiber of my being. We're posed. I, what I propose is, is it can be done. I think we're in a position to to really make it happen. And my team and your team are already working closely together in light, to light up the path forward here. Critical laws like the PRO Act to strengthen collective bargaining, on politics like prevailing 
and for, look, I guess I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm t taking too much time, but you know, when these guys go out and misclassify workers as independent contractors, when they go do so many things and you know, to, to make it hard to get overtime, so, you know, we have a bold vision of modernizing the electrical grid. I mean, we have, to, and it's going to be create millions of good paying jobs. Just starting off by installing 500,000 electrical vehicle charging stations, electrifying our rail system, so much more that not only does it make sense long term for us and good jobs, but it's the thing that's going to take us out of this near depression. We have an extraordinary chance before us, but it can't get there without you. We can't, and that's not hyperbole. So please, stay engaged. Talk to your friends and neighbors. Let them know how important this moment is for all of us. Tell them what I'm telling you today, and I mean it sincerely. We need you. We want you. The country needs you. And I'm absolutely confident if we pull together, not only are we going to win, we're going to take a monumental step forward for the prosperity, power, safety, and dignity of all American workers. I truly, truly believe that. You're more than essential workers. You provide more than essential service. You are literally the backbone of this country. And when I said, when I announced, I said I was announcing for three reasons. One, to restore the soul of the nation. Decency, honor, all those values which you try to teach your kids. All of them. The ones we've been taught. Secondly, to rebuild the backbone of this country. The middle class. And it can't fully be built without growing unions, not slowing, growing, growing the union movement. You know, back in the 30s, when we had the first breakthrough in terms of what and for uh, having union movement be able to move, you know, it didn't say we should allow unions. It said we should encourage the union movement. That's what you're going to have in the White House somebody who's going to be hollering for the union movement. And you're going to have a seat at the table, I promise you. Look, your engagement is absolutely essential. We cannot get there without you. And that's the core, at the core, the reason why you're so important is because of your value system. Decency, honor, patriotism, real patriotism making sure that we do what's right for the country. You know, think about it. The union movement not only did an awful lot for union members, we wouldn't have a 40-hour week. And for all people, not just union members, were it not for unions. We wouldn't have overtime were it not for unions. We wouldn't have the, the wage raised in some states to $15 an hour, which you guys make more than without the union movement. We wouldn't have all the safety built in to our system without the union movement. You didn't do it just for you. You provided that opportunity for everybody else who works for a living. One big thing has changed. Two big things. One, you're going to have a president who is a union guy and cares about and understands the significance. And secondly, all the talk the last 20 years about driving down the rationale for unions, all of a sudden, this phrase, this phrase, everybody's been woked. Well, guess what? The rest of the working class people in America have been awakened and realized, whoa, why? Because I work at a fast food restaurant that I have to sign an agreement that I will not compete a non-compete agreement that I will not go across town to another fast food restaurant and try to get a raise. What in the hell is that about? Millions of people have to sign that. Why is that? Why is it that when the majority of the corporations, when you get a job, make you sign, you won't ever tell anybody what your wage is that you work with or you can be penalized? Why is that? They don't want the woman or the African-American or the Hispanic working next to you who find out that you make more money than they make. It's all about driving down wages, driving down opportunity. I'm getting too wound up here, but I really mean it. Lonnie, I can't thank you enough for you guys all the way back in February endorsing me. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, 
I will not let you down. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. We can do this. We can do this.